Hello and welcome back. I just noticed my user interface got pushed down, and I think that's because we parented them onto game objects. Uh, I've seen this happen before. I was hoping that it, it would just be fine, but Unity does some weird, crazy nonsense if you parent UI incorrectly. So, drag these off, um, delete the ammunition and score folders, and we're just going to let everything sort of float on its own. Now, go ahead and repair these like so, and then go back into play mode. Everything's fixed. Um, sorry about that, guys. I, I don't know why that happens. I, I feel like you should be able to still use like the same parenting folder structure for UI, uh, but it just it just falls apart quickly. Um, I guess on the bright side, I'm glad that it happened now rather than five videos from now. At least, like at least we solved it quickly. So. The next thing we want to do is allow the player to reload their weapon. So go ahead and open up the basic gun script. And how do we want to do this? Um, we could use a separate timer or we could use an invoke. I think I'm just going to use a separate timer variable. So I'm going to have public float reload length and by default it's just going to take 0.8 seconds to reload and then public float reload cooldown and now th this, this is the amount of time it takes to reload and then this is the variable we actually use to keep track of like the actual timer variable so when the player runs out of bullets, they get here. And now we could start reloading automatically, or we could expect them to hit the R key. I think I'm going to make them hit R, just to make the game a little bit more challenging. Um, so we need to listen for the R key. So we can do if input.get key, key code. And then Unity has built in key codes for pretty much every single key that you could hit on a keyboard. So I'm just going to do key, key code dot r. Whoops. Key code dot r. And two parentheses. And we'll just call a reload function. Reload. And I spelled re reload wrong. Reload. Like that. And now when we're reloading, um, by default, I think I'm just going to set um, clip remaining back to, to max clip size. Which is just called clip size. So right off the bat, as soon as they hit R, they should just instantly get bullets back. And that works. Okay, so now that we know we can reload, um, let's also implement the reload length and reload cooldown. And I also want a value for reloading, so I'm going to create a private bool reloading. And so now, once the player starts reloading, they're going to be locked in. So by, by default, this is false. They're not reloading. Um, Right here, they're going to start reloading, so set that to true. And if, if they are reloading, um, if they're clicking the mouse, I'm just going to ignore that. So if, relo if reloading equals false, they can do this. Um, but, but during the process of reloading, it's just going to skip over this whole statement right here. And then when they finish reloading, we need to reset that. So, let's see. 
my variables are called reload re reload length and reload cooldown. So if time dot time is greater than re reload cooldown, reloading equals false. And clip remaining equals clip size. And we only want to reload, we only want to call the reload function if we're not currently in the process of reloading. So we can say and reloading equals false. And right here we can play a reloading sound. Sorry. Alright, so now if we click on the weapon, sci-fi rifle, we have Oh, something broke. Unexpected symbol equals. Double click on that. Oh, okay. So that should be a double equals. Uh, a single equals is an assignment, so we're assigning the value false to reloading. A double equals is like a comparison. We're, we're comparing reloading and seeing if that value is false. Alright, so now that that compiled, um, Sci-Fi Rifle, it has a new field for Reloading Clip. That should be in Soldier Sounds Pack. Reload. And now let's just walk back through our logic and make sure everything makes sense. So, we have three fields, Reload Length, Reload Cooldown, and Reloading. When we start reloading, Oh yeah, Re so reload cooldown should be the time it takes to reload plus the current game time. Time.time .time plus reload length. And so let's say we're at 10 seconds of game time. Reloading takes about a second, so now this is going to be set to roughly 11 seconds. We signal that we're re we signal that we are reloading. And this prevents firing and the clicking sound. And then we play a sound that signals that we're reloading. Um, now, when the game reaches 11 seconds, we've passed the reload cooldown. We're going to set reloading to false and um, make sure the clip is set back to the full clip size. And go ahead and hit play. And something's broken, because we're automatically um, having infinite bullets. So why would that happen? If time dot time... Oh, well, that's obvious. If the time is greater than reload cooldown, and we are reloading, then set the clip size to the full clip size. Alright, so we fixed that. We ran out of bullets. We hit R. It makes the clicking sound. And we have bullets again. Alright, so I want to make the reload take longer. So let's set that to about 1.4. And I think the player needs a few more bullets, so let's give him 18 off the bat. Looks good. And you'll notice we set 18 to the max clip size, and um, we, are, we are getting that many bullets back, but it's not updating this value here. So let's find where we update the user the user interface. 
which is here. Go ahead and copy that, paste it. And we want to update uh, max bullets. So max bullets dot text equals um, clip size dot two string. All right. And now I just want to tweak the the bullets quickly. I don't really like how they're flying around like that. So I'm going to go into the um, and the Axon health script. What did I call it? Enemy health. And when he collides with a bullet, I'm just going to destroy the bullet. And that would be on collision, if we collide with a bullet, destroy uh, collision dot game object. All right. And I think the bullets should move faster. So in my sci-fi rifle object, set the move set the bullet force to like fourteen hundred. I think they could still fly a little bit faster. Set that to like 18. In. And I want to move the muzzle slightly away from the player. So to do that, I click on muzzle, I, I hit F in the scene view to zoom in. And I'm just going to drag that out. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Cutting this video off here. Thanks for watching, guys.